This episode of the ResortLoop.com podcast is brought to you by Joffrey's Coffee and Tea Company. Joffrey's is proud to be the official specialty coffee of Disney. Enjoy drinks and pastries at Joffrey's kiosks throughout the parks and check out the Disney specialty coffee collection only at joffreys.com. Live from the Animal Kingdom, it's Monica Pinto from the themouseinourhouse.com and the Resort Loop blogging team. Here to say, Tim and Bob, Bob and Tim, let's get this show rolling. With Sabrina and Manny, I'm here to say, Ding Bong! Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. To our new passengers, we welcome you aboard our Highway in the Sky. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. This is Tim Scott. I'm Bob Collar. This is ResortLoop.com. This is episode 247. Wow, you're switching things up on me all the time. I, it's different every time. <laughs> it's like a big puzzle, just stick, no how I put it together. Stick to the script. <laughs> sure. <laughs> hey Tim. The script uh, we, is right up here. Right up here, I'm pointing <laughs> to my head. Is that where you were pointing? That's where I was pointing. All right. Uh, Tim, we got to thank uh, Monica Pinto. Sabrina and Manny, how cute. How cute from our vlogging team. A little bing bong there. Love the bing bong. Um, which, by the way, just saw uh, Inside Out. What'd you think? Loved it. Isn't what, that cute? Oh, what a great movie. Well written. Yeah, very well written. Another home run from Pixar. Um, you know, they don't uh, they don't miss too often. No, no. Um, no, absolutely not. Yeah, we won't talk about planes and cars, too. Anyway. <laughs> planes wasn't Pixar, though, was it? Yes. Oh, Planes 2 was not Pixar. Planes 2, I don't believe it. Fire and Rescue. Right. <laughs> right. Um, anyway, um, again, thank you, Monica. Appreciate that. Tim, if someone else would like to send in a show open. Just call us on the uh, Looper line. Area code 414. WDW. Loop. Strange how that all worked out. The universe has since gone into a harmonic convergence of looping. <laughs> I know. You've been reading Science Magazine again, haven't you? Science Magazine, some Discovery Network. Wow. Kind of caffeinated myself up today. I watched a couple of Clint Eastwood movies. Oh, my that, goodness. Does that count for anything? No. No. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, special shout out uh, to uh, a, a listener, yes. new listener, um, uh, Brittany Elise Snyder Phelps. I'm not sure which one wrote to us. Oh, wow. <laughs> Brittany, thank you for writing. She says, Thanks, uh, are you still without Utah listeners? Uh, I'm from Utah and started from episode one. Love the show and the information. Planning a trip for June 2016. First one ever. Wow, yes. Huge Disneyland fan and excited to try out Disney World. I want to hear when you get back. What, what the, the, we always hear about people going from Disney World to Disneyland. Yes. We don't hear too much the other way. Right. Right. We so. might have to have Brittany on. Brittany, keep show. us in mind. Yeah, because uh, that's yeah, that's going to be uh, interesting to uh, get her take on that. Uh, whole different world. Exactly. Whole different world. But Brittany, you're not our only listener from Utah. No. Who? The winner of our 200th episode and two-year anniversary. Yes. Heather Schmidt from the great city of Salt Lake. Absolutely. I believe she was going this month, actually, Tim. I know she's going there. She said the fall. Soon. So yeah. Yes. So, she uh, did send me a note, so she's all excited she's going to be down there. Yeah, can't wait to hear back from her as well. Tell, let us know, Heather, how it's going or how it she went. She hasn't been there in decades. Yes. So good for her. And we sent her with a pass, us and, and Joffrey's Coffee. Yep. And uh, again, thank you, Joffrey's Coffee, for that. That was wonderful. Um, speaking of Joffrey's, you and I yes. enjoyed the last of your caramel mudslide. We did, just today. Wow. <sighs> One, fantastic. Two, a little sad. What? <laughs> <laughs> it, is a, it is. I'm going to go through withdrawals. We got to make another order here pretty soon. And you saw me. I couldn't. I couldn't throw the bag away. No. <laughs> I. You know what? To be honest with you, the the artwork on that that Joffrey's has on their bags is phenomenal. Oh, it's love the art. I think it's actually award winning. Yes, they've won awards for their mm -hmm. artwork. Yes, so. they have. You're exactly right. So uh, we may have some things coming in the near future. I think so. Tim, Bob, from our friends at Joffrey's <laughs> Coffee and Tea Company. Uh, absolutely. Um, and again, if you're if you're down there, uh, let us know how you uh, how you like the um, tea traders. Yes, 
you know, snap us a picture if you're down there and send it to us. We'd appreciate them, if it. You, if you don't know which tea to get, get that root beer flavored one. Let me know what you think. Yeah, yeah. I had the uh, the uh, green tea blackberry uh, jasmine. Oh or, my goodness! Or something like that. I don't know. It's very good. So Ice tea. Drink that on a magic carpet. It's a. <laughs> <laughs> It's a it's a really good uh, it's a really good uh, iced tea. Okay, oh, uh, I love they iced got some tea. wonderful iced tea, especially on a hot day. So, you know. <laughs> I think it gets hot down there, uh, especially in at the uh, Afri- uh, <laughs> Africa the Animal Kingdom Lodge <laughs> is what Tim? It's Africa hot. Oh my gosh, I'm losing my mind. Pull yourself together, it's man. It's been a long day. You've got a show to do. Yeah, I'm still sad about the caramel mudslide. Anyway, before we get started, I have a this day. In Disney history. Excellent, excellent. Actually, three of them. Three? Three days? Three. Well, it is a weekend. Three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, by the way, everybody in the U.S., happy Labor Day weekend. Enjoy your Labor Day we, weekend. We, uh, you know, we hope you had a good one. Here, the big thing in Northeast Ohio is the uh, air show in Air Cleveland. show. Are you going to be going up to Cleveland this week, catch some planes, Bob, you think? This uh, no. No? No. Yeah. I try not to go up on busy weekends. Right, right. You know. Okay. So, I... I, I came down to the studio today for well, you yeah well thank you very much for the coffee <laughs> the coffee in the fountain <laughs> <laughs> anyway anyway uh this day in disney history 1955 Ooh, back way back in the day way back in the day five-year-old elisa marquez is welcomed as the one millionth guest entering disneyland why did i bring that up i'm trying to figure this out yes because it happened just seven weeks after the park opened i was gonna say didn't it just open up seven weeks wow well a lot of those people were repeat visitors million (laughs) i would think (laughs) one i don't think they repeated that many times one million visitors in seven weeks that's incredible less than two months my gosh wow so there you go with that uh also you think some of those people would hit universal then no. <laughs> Didn't exist. You know that. I know that. Come anyway, uh, and, and uh, back in 1998, um, very sad day in Disney history oh. for us park visitors. Disneyland's submarine voyage attraction closes with a 7 a.m. ceremony officiated by the U.S. Navy commander Robert Thomas. Always sad when an attraction closes. The exact same day. On the other side of the United States, the Walt Disney World attraction, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, is permanently closed. First of all, that is sad. Second of all, that was 1998. 1998. Wow. It doesn't seem like that long ago. Yeah. That's insane. Isn't that crazy? Oh. Yeah. Now I feel old. Yeah, well, you know, it's weird, because I, I thought Mr. Toad's actually closed long before 98. But, really? Yeah, I don't know why. Oh, but now Toad's still open in Disneyland, right, Mr. Toad? Yes, it is. Yes, it so, is. There's hope. Yep, yep. A new hope that... <laughs> no, <laughs> I can no that it. movie's over. No. Oh. Uh, it awakens now. Oh, The Force Awakens. Yes. yes. So... That's all I got. That's all you got. (laughs) Anyway, Tim, (laughs) what are we going to talk about today? Today, I was thinking about this as I was driving into work one day. Mm -hmm. As I was driving, you know, north, as I like to say, Mm -hmm. because I wasn't coming home. (laughs) That'd be going south. (laughs) But going north, I'm thinking, what are my concerns concerning? You know, we've had D23, right? Right. We've had you know all these announcements made. A lot of good announcements, man. A lot of good announcements. Yeah. A lot of construction going on now that aren't even related to the announcements. Right. What are some of my concerns moving forward in our Disney ecosystem? In our Disney sphere of influence? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Do you have any concerns? Or do you want me to start off with my concerns? One of my concerns? Well, when you first told me about this, you said, mm-hmm. you said uh, what fears do you have concerns for the future? Yes. And I, I, I got confused. Well, you usually do. It's easy for that to happen. <laughs> I was almost like math. I'm afraid that they're going to put more of those balloon rides like at Downtown Disney. Because you know I'm afraid of heights. You are afraid of heights. I don't want any more balloon rides. Pilot. I don't want to go up in a balloon <laughs> and be frightened. So that was a fear I had. He's wearing his scaredy pants today. But now, now I understand it's a different kind of fear. It is. All right. 
So what you you start us off then, since I misunderstood. I've, one of my fears. I'm still optimistic, but I'm getting concerned about the monorail a little bit. What? Huh? It's it's showing some wear. They're cutting down some hours. Yeah. Now I'm hoping. Yeah. No, I was honestly hoping for something, maybe a D23, about like a new monorail being announced. Yeah, that would have been nice. We're going to start rolling out the Mark, or what are we on now? The Mark 7? 7, I believe. I think we're on the 7. We're on the 7, so maybe a Mark 8. Maybe 8's in Disneyland now. Maybe the Mark 9. We'll be like Microsoft. We'll skip 9. We'll just jump to 10. Um, (laughs) Well, I do know that they they redid some of the interior. They put new new carpeting inside. Yeah. It's got... Eh. Eh. I want the air conditioning to work. What? Oh, when I was it, on... When it pulls into yeah. the, the Ticket and Transportation Center, yeah. I don't want to have them to have to say, and they've said this, we need to reboot the monorail. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. <laughs> That's true. And when it shut down, it sounded like Microsoft Windows XP. I'll be honest. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. It made a noise, and then it just went dark and quiet. <laughs> now, it booted up relatively soon, so maybe it wasn't Windows XP. <laughs> yeah. You never know. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It might be running DOS. I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah. So yeah, I mean, you hear about all the limited hours. I mean, and you can see some wear and tear. Yeah, not even on the inside, yeah. on the outside. You, you know, the last time I was down there, uh, it was yellow monorail, yellow, no AC in it. Now I don't know. I don't know if they had to reboot it after I was on it, but it was awfully hot. You're not getting too much air blown in those things either because they're low aerodynamic. They're pretty, pretty well sealed. Yeah, they're sleek. So you don't uh, have screen doors. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. And then we had this, all this no, news about, you know, they're going to make me make a resort loop road is basically how I can describe it. Yeah. I yeah. wouldn't be surprised if that's what they call it, by the way. The resort loop avenue or road. I like that idea. I know you and I have talked about it, but I like the idea. I know, but are they doing it because they, maybe the monorail is going to maybe... Uh, no. I don't think it'll go away. But they're going to make it easier for guests to get to uh, the deluxe resorts. Without having to go through the Magic Kingdom entrance. I, that's my guess. So if they do this, does that mean maybe the monorail will be an express loop in both directions? Maybe it won't stop at no, the resorts. No, 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 no. The monorail is still going to be utilized at the resort. I'm getting concerned. It's still going to be a I'm resort loop of the monorail. That's not what it's for. It's so that the buses don't have to, the cars don't have to fight with the buses and the buses fight with the cars with the general population. Here's my thing. I've done this. I've driven around these roads. Yeah. They're not that bad. I know they're not that bad. They're improving. They're going to make it even better for you. How much money are they going to spend to make it just a little bit better? How many millions of dollars are they going to spend to Boy, make it a little bit better? Boy, listen to you. I'm just saying. We've already done the half-empty it's a podcast. Concern. It's just a what concern. are you doing? I'm thinking. It's what I do. <laughs> Anybody can think inside the box. Who That's think true. Outside the box. Well, let me tell you one of my fears, concerns. Okay. Yes, I want to hear. And this is this one has been expressed by many many people, and it's gonna it's it's the cost. I am I am starting to become very concerned about the cost. And um, the where I'm going with this is, you you know that you and I usually take one trip a year at least. Mm-hmm. At least yes. Sometimes we try and get down there more often. My concern is going to be that it's going to become too expensive for even an annual trip down there. That you're gonna you're gonna have to save and save and do that once every two or three maybe five year trip for the mm-hmm. average person, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm concerned about that because uh, as a stockholder, you want people to come down as often as they can to spend a lot of money on food and merchandise and things like that. The tickets to get in, I just don't know. I mean, I, I would like to know what their spreadsheet is on how much the tickets go toward the operation of the parks. Right, how they break down those accounts and what pays for what. Right. Absolutely. Because your greatest profit margin always is food and beverage. Yes. So, I mean, obviously the, it, it costs them nothing to charge you an arm and a leg to get in the place, so maybe there is the, the profit margin's just so huge. That how they, about parking alone? The parking, if you're staying off property, is, forget what is, about what, it. What is parking now, per so like eighteen dollars. Um, I, I usually believe don't it is eighteen dollars now. Yeah, I, I haven't paid for parking in so long. I, figure I couldn't if, tell you. If half those cars are actually paying for parking, how yeah. much money are they making every day at all these parks? Yeah, for your car to sit out in the hot sun. Exactly. So that's a, that, that's a concern of mine. I know uh, mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. we've talked about that, and and I I understand you want people to stay just within the parks and uh, the resorts and stay as long as they can, which is cheaper if you do that, but. 
for guys like us that like to shoot down for a, a long weekend, um, you know, the, you're you're cutting cutting us off, kind of. I know there's always a big uh, riff in that. You know, the biggest Disney fans, the people who go down every year, they don't have any kind of incentive program, right? Or loyalty program, yeah. yeah. But here's the thing, and here's the thing, not just the money we spend, and you know this, but even before we started the show, people we knew would always ask us about going to Disney. Always. Where Always. should we stay? How much can we count on spending? Right. What's the best way to go? Should we fly? Should we drive? Right. Well, it's almost like we're ambassadors. Yeah. You know, oh, not, not us, just Bob and I, but just, anybody who's gone down there, oh. any, any of our listeners, right. you've already been down there. I'm sure all your friends are going up to you and asking you. Absolutely. What's the best way to tackle a Walt Disney World vacation? Right. Right. And it's kind of sad when the first thing you have to say is, well, you know, what's your budget? Right. Right. How much do you want to spend? Yeah. Yeah. And when they say, eh, a couple hundred bucks, yeah, you're not going. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it's still, at this point in time anyway, it's still a good value, I think, for that for that annual trip. Um, because uh, we've read different blogs and different posts where they've, they've compared a trip to Walt Disney World for a week as opposed to going to the beach for a week. Mm-hmm. And it mm-hmm. breaks down to about the same amount of money. Right. Um, and then when you look at the entertainment value that you get, it's actually a little bit better to go to Walt Disney World, especially for us Disney fanatics that just love it. Um, but again, they keep raising those prices. You can't keep doing that one that annual trip down there. Now you got to look at other options uh, for for your vacation dollar. Right. So that's a concern of mine. Absolutely, it is. Here's another concern of mine. As long as we're going on. Everyone's very excited about Disney Springs. Love Disney Springs. Rightfully so. It's going to be beautiful. When it's all done, it's hopefully going to be easy to get in and out of. Now, you recall way back in the day, the, uh, what's it called? <laughs> Disney Springs? Well, before Disney Springs. Downtown oh. Disney. Downtown Disney, uh, Lake Buena Vista, the Lake Buena Vista, villages at Lake Buena Vista. Yeah. Downtown Disney when it was Pleasure Island. Right. At a certain point, it got so popular, it started uh, developing a uh, not-so-family-friendly following. True. You know, people were coming down, maybe spending, and they weren't really spending a whole lot of money. They were just kind of going down there to hang out and maybe causing maybe a little bit of a ruckus. Ruckus. And this kind of happened more after they stopped uh, admission. Remember you had to pay a little extra to get into Pleasure yes, Island? Yes, yes. Uh-huh. Eventually, they took that away. And once that kind of happened, people were just kind of hanging out down there and... Uh, so Things you, are going on that weren't kosher. Is are you concerned that it's becoming um, that that all of Disney or just Disney Springs is going to be too adult? I'm not even worried about too adult. I'm worried about the safety factor. Now it might be more adult, especially with the kinds of restaurants that they're getting in there. Mm-hmm. There's not a whole lot of you know child restaurants. Well, I suppose you have Rainforest Cafe and the uh, Dinosaur. Yeah, the East Side's still going to be family, more family friendly. I should say, not right. just family. But the, the west side's going to be a little bit more upscale uh, couples, nice dinner out for couples. But I'm thinking, like you had said before, more for the locals to go there for a, you know a special anniversary oh, dinner or something like and that. And locals are, are are fantastic. I'm just worried about you know a certain element yeah. maybe showing up. Because you know, back in the day, there were a lot of uh, cars broken into in the parking lots. Oh, yeah, yeah. There are a lot of like thefts going on in the parking lots, and I'm thinking maybe the parking decks will help alleviate that possibly. Maybe they'll be able to be patrolled, maybe a little better surveillance. Right, right. But you know, back in the day, before you no, know, I don't want to say pleasure island closed, but you know, pleasure island closed. There was a whole, there was a bad element starting to develop mm. down there. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just saying it's just something I'm just kind of concerned about. I'm not necessarily sure it'll happen, but it's something yeah. to keep our yeah. eye on. Well, I mean, the whole, uh, a lot of the Disney atmosphere is becoming a little bit more adult than it was. Well, that's true. Um, I mean, with the with the uh, Fantasyland expansion, that's obviously a very kid friendly uh, for the youngsters. But uh, and absolutely, you need things for the adults to do too. Right, right, but not not to where now it's skewing the other way either. Well, you know, you got food and wine, which is which is um, more uh, obviously more adult oriented. Mm-hmm, right. Um, but they do have that during not during the school year though. So True. You, so you're not going to have True. a whole lot of children in there for that anyway, in theory, or as many. Right, right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's a concern. Sure. Or just, you know, just something I'm thinking about, concerns. You know, sure. Something we'll think about, wonder about. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, you got to wonder what the direction of the uh, the entire organization is going to be. 
the whole Disney organization as a whole with, uh, you know, Bob Iger going to be s- stepping down in a few years. He's not stepping down. He's going to step down. He keeps down. pushing it back. He's going to step down. Well, he's push. I think he's pushing it back for Shanghai. Once Shanghai is done, then then his work there will, and and well, all of the the new the Star Wars Star expansion Wars, yeah. and all that stuff. He wants that to be his fingerprints, not uh, not Tommy's. I don't know. I kind of have a feeling that the board's going to want him to stay on until Star Wars is done. Oh yeah. Well, so he's there for another five years at least. Well. I thought he was. How long is he supposed to be there? Oh, I not can't that remember long. Now. He's yeah, not supposed to be there that long now. I think but... twenty seventeen. Yeah. The board will highly suggest that. Yeah. He'll make it worth his while. He'll be a, he'll be a consultant or something. Or... Something. Yeah. Or just CEO. Just stay on as CEO. If the stock's doing well, then you don't want to rock that boat. No. It, well, well, and he might need a couple extra bucks too. Yeah, that's true. You know, yeah. economy's down. Yeah. You know, he might want to stick around, keep that job. <laughs> you don't give up a job that you know. <laughs> that quickly. <laughs> He's got to keep the Oldsmobile Omega running. <laughs> I had an Oldsmobile Omega. Did you? Yeah, I did. I almost went Chrysler K car. I can decide which one is funny. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a Chrysler K car the other day with historical license plates on it. Oh, wow. That was awesome. Wow. That's sad. <laughs> it was sad. That but it was still sad. running. Oh, it was my still running. goodness. <laughs> uh, with all the concerns and everything, you still going? You still going back? Oh, absolutely. You're still going back. I'm going to go back. <laughs> of course you're going to go back. That's what we do. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We love it. We love it. Um, yeah, I can't wait to go back. Well, I was just telling you earlier you today. Were. I, I need a vacation. <laughs> 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 but, uh, hey, uh, just let you know, we've started our training for the uh, 20, uh, 2016 Princess uh, 5K. That's awesome. Started our training. It's not going well. <laughs> well, it's not going well for you. No, it's not going well. I'm sure everyone else is doing just fine. Uh, my knees. I'm getting old. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Anyway, Tim, uh, that's all I've got. Awesome. You got any more concerns? You want to air some grievances? No, I think we'll just wrap it up right there. I don't think I'm actually negative, but... No. You know, every once in a while you get to thinking. I'm thinking, I wonder right. about this. I wonder about that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, everybody, thanks for joining us. I'm Tim Scott. You can find me on Twitter at Resort Loop Tim. Facebook, Tim Resort Loop Scott and... That beautiful webpage. I'm so slightly subjective on that one. <laughs> Resortloop.com. <laughs> Who designed that webpage? Well, not me, but still. No, anyway. <laughs> uh, I'm Resort Loop Bob on the Twitter and Instagram. Don't forget Facebook forward slash Resort Loop. Rate us on iTunes, please. That takes us uh, quite a few places on uh, the whole iTunes world. And uh, where else can they listen to? You can always find us on the Stitcher. Everybody, thanks for joining us. This has been The Gateway to the Magic. See you, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, we are currently holding for further traffic clearance. Once the monorail in front of us moves a safe distance away, we will resume our forward motion. Please remember to stay clear of all automatic doors. If you're standing, please continue to hold on to the silver handrails. Thank you.